Constructor theory is a new way, uh, is a new mode of explanation which uh, David Deutsch proposed and that um, David and I are developing, um, which uh, is very different from the usual conception of uh, fundamental physics in which you describe things giving uh, the initial state and the laws of motion. So you say what happens. Um, while in constructor theory you describe uh, the world in terms of uh, what is possible and what is impossible and um, that gives you extra power with respect to the prevailing conception. We switch to a formulation of science in terms of tasks and this, um, these tasks are performed by constructors so uh, possible tasks are the one for which the laws of physics allow the existence of a constructor, um, and that's how constructors come into the picture. So a constructor is an object which uh, can perform uh, a task and retain the property to perform it again. So for instance, um, a catalyst which catalyzes a chemical reaction is an example of a constructor. Uh, ovens are constructors, computers are constructors. Um, so it's everything that can do something and retain a property to do it again. To do it again. So basically this says that what ha the, the way we describe the world is in terms of uh, transformations. So in this uh, transformation there is uh, something that is changed, that is a substrate, and something that changes it, that is a constructor. And those are the two main actors um, and the two fundamental objects that we uh, identify in, in every um, physical process. The biggest question is to uh, understand whether um, it is possible to formulate physics in uh, this um, new way which uh, brings tasks at the centre of the attention. For example, if you think of the program that um, is contained in a robot, um, that is information which uh, provides instructions to uh, the different parts of the robot, of the robot um, and, 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 uh, and, and tells the robot what to do with the substrates. So that's an example of information that acts as a constructor. Of course, uh, in real life there are only approximations to ideal constructors. Knowledge is uh, one of the uh, best approximations to a constructor because uh, it, it gets preserved, because it's an abstract constructor. And um, so that's, that's just an example, but you could think of, again, DNA. DNA is another example. Uh, DNA provides instructions to the cell uh, as to what to do to build uh, certain chemicals, which are then used in the body to produce certain other chemicals and so on. At the moment, we, uh, we don't have a... Um, a, a good grasp on what is the specific property that powers quantum computation. So, uh, and the reason why uh, we don't have that is that uh, we don't have a good understanding of how quantum information is related to information. Uh, but having this new theory where we can in fact relate the two in a precise way um, may well be the first step towards understanding um, how to express the information processing power of a quantum computer in, uh, in terms of information and therefore this could inform the uh, research towards actually building a universal quantum computer. If you look at certain um, physical processes such as natural selection and you uh, abstract away all the unnecessary details, you uh, you're left with uh, something that has to do with information that acts as a constructor and that's acted upon by the environment. And uh, this view, uh, this, this, uh, this abstraction, the, you know, the possibility of um, looking at this process and just um, singling out the logic of it, uh, can be very helpful also not only from a physical perspective but also from a biological perspective. 